questions 99 to 102. We've covered uh, nucleic acids, we've covered carbohydrates, so it's only natural that we have uh, amino acids. So this is from the current edition of the Gold Standard Book, or 12.2.2. And we can see a classic rendition of an amino acid, which of course is called an amino acid because it has an amino group here, and it has a carboxylic acid functional group, COOH. And so the molecule is classically oriented such that there is the N-terminus, or the free amino end, and on the other side there's the C-terminus, or the free carboxyl end. Now the uniqueness of the amino acid is dependent on the R group, and Acer has a table listing the different types of R groups. You can have a quick look and then pause the video and answer this question. Which amino acid would make it such that this central carbon would not be chiral? Of course, the answer is glycine, because with glycine, R is just a hydrogen, and therefore the central carbon would be bonded to two hydrogens, so that's not four different things. And so that central carbon would not be chiral, and therefore glycine does not have a stereocenter. All the other amino acids would at least be chiral at that carbon. Now let's look at the bonding of amino acids. Notice there's one hydrogen, NOH, and that combines to make H2O. This is a condensation reaction. Two molecules combine together with the release of water. Just like when you've seen condensation on a window or on a mirror, you have water that accumulates there. Well, this reaction also produces water. And look carefully at the peptide bond. That's the bond between carbon and nitrogen. It's also called an amide bond when you have this carbonyl group and the nitrogen bonded to the carbon. So amide and peptide have the same meaning, except the word peptide is more often used with respect to proteins. Notice carefully the reverse reaction. Water can be used to break the peptide bond. This reverse reaction is called hydrolysis. Hydro refers to water, and lysis refers to something being broken apart. So water can hydrolyze peptides. Enzymes can facilitate this reaction. They can catalyze it, lowering the activation energy for the reaction to occur. And this is where trypsin and chymotrypsin, for example, do their thing. And now to the passage. So Acer describes the general formula of an alpha amino acid, which you can see here. Now it's called alpha amino acid because you have the carbonyl group here, and the carbon right next door to it is called the alpha carbon. So when the amino group is connected to the alpha carbon, it's called an alpha amino acid. The first paragraph has a bit of a typographical error by saying the amino acids in the body are all alpha amino acids, which is not true. The sentence is missing the word proteinogenic or protein building because we need alpha amino acids to build the proteins in our body, but we do have beta amino acids, gamma amino acids, etc. In fact, right now you are thinking with a gamma amino acid, quite famous one called GABA, which is a neurotransmitter. And just as an aside, I think Acer's exams are of a very high quality, so little typos here and there are par for the course. The next thing they allude to is the Zwitter ion state. It's not important in this question, but I just want to show it to you because it can come up on other GAMSAT exams. So although many textbooks might draw an amino acid like this as a generic neutral structure, this never exists at any pH. When an amino acid is neutral, the carboxylic acid group does what acids do, which is donates a proton, and the amino group does what bases do and accepts the proton. So here is the true condition at neutrality with the proton having been released and the proton having been accepted. Thus the molecule is polar and in fact it is called dipolar or a Zwitter ion. You can pause the video and consider what would happen to the overall charge of this amino acid if the pH was 12 and what would happen to the overall charge if the pH was 2? 
hopefully you would say that if the pH is 2, that means it's in an environment that is full of protons and therefore it will become protonated and therefore the overall charge would be plus 1. And if the pH was 12, then it would be in a very basic environment and therefore it would become deprotonated and this will be now neutral. This would still be negative and so the overall charge would be negative 1. The only conditions in which that would change is if the R group can receive or donate protons itself. Okay, let's move back to the passage. So, I just wrote down the different nonopeptides here. Non, of course, stands for the fact that each contains nine amino acids. And then on the next page, we get information about trypsin and chymotrypsin. We already discussed our enzymes that are secreted into the small intestine and digest proteins or peptides. And in fact, now we can be more specific and say they actually hydrolyze proteins or peptides by using water to cleave or break the bonds. Of course, those are referring to peptide bonds. Again, keeping in mind there's an amino N and a carboxyl end, we are given information that trypsin cleaves or cuts the amino acid on the carboxyl end of lysine or on the carboxyl side of arginine. I just put their X as being any amino acid except for proline. But I'm not worried about proline at all because I know trypsin cuts lysine, but I can't find lysine anywhere. But I know it also cuts arginine, and I do see arginine. I see arginine here and here. But on the right side of arginine is no proline. On the right side, there's no proline. So I'm not going to let this rule bother me anymore. So next there's chymotrypsin and we find out that it can cut on the right side or carboxyl side of tyrosine, tryptophan and phenylalanine. Now that all the rules are clear, it'll be very easy to answer the questions. Question 99. Cleavage of which of the four is facilitated by trypsin? Well, I've already said that I can't find lysine anywhere, so we don't have to worry about that. And we've seen arginine in two locations. Here this is where it will break and here so this is where it would break arginine is not found anywhere else and so argypressin and cephalotoxin will be affected by trypsin but not oxytocin or octopressin so the answer for 99 must be B question 100 which amino acid could be isolated with chymotrypsin and facilitates the cleavage of argypressin so first I look at my rule it cuts on the right side of tyrosine. I find tyrosine here. Here's where it'll cut. There's no more tyrosine. Next, on the right side of tryptophan, TRP, I look. There is no tryptophan. Next, on the right side of phenylalanine, I look. There's one here and no more. And so with chymotrypsin, one amino acid will be isolated phenylalanine and so the answer is A. Also just for your interest notice that phenylalanine will be isolated as well as a dipeptide over here and also notice that if only the enzyme trypsin was given you'd be able to isolate glycine as an amino acid. Okay so then let's look at question 101. What are the products when the cleavage of cephalotoxin facilitated by trypsin? So, cephalotoxin, trypsin, we already did it. What do we get? We get one, two, three, four amino acids together. That's a tetrapeptide. And one, two, three, four, five amino acids together. That's a pentapeptide. So, 101, the answer is D. Okay, so 102. Suppose we're back to argypressin. It's broken down into units no longer than tripeptides. So, tripeptides is going to be the maximum size. To do this, trypsin, chymotrypsin were used. Okay, we already saw what happens when we use uh, chymotrypsin. So we were able to get a dipeptide. That's fine. That's less than a tripeptide. We got uh, one amino acid. That's fine. Um, with trypsin, we got one amino acid. But we have this problem here, this pentapeptide. One, two, three, four, five. So we have a pentapeptide that we're going to have to get to be smaller the biggest size it says no longer than tripeptides so we have to get this smaller we can do that by cutting here on the right side of ASN which is asparagine 
that would create a dipeptide and a tripeptide. Or we can cut right here on the right side of cysteine, and that would create a tripeptide and a dipeptide. So the right side, of course, I mean the carboxyl side. And so 102, the answer is B. Of course, asparagine wasn't an option. So from the book, you can look at uh, Biology Chapter 3, Organic Chemistry 12.1 12.2, and in our HEAPS exams, we have many units on protein digestion. So you'll have heaps of practice.